Well, hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining this afternoon's webinar. For today's topic, we're gonna to be looking at activities for warmer weather. I recognize many of you joining in on the webinar have been going through a really difficult few past few days and the term warmer weather might sound like the euphemism of the season really. So while this webinar may seem to be impeccably timed, I wanna stress that our workshops are planned months in advance. While the recent heat wave may unavoidably be at the forefront of everyone's mind, it's not actually the focus of what we're going to be covering today. Luckily, we are returning to more moderate temperatures and there will be opportunities to enjoy the summer weather we are more typically used to. In the meantime, if you are looking for information on how you can cope with the heat for individuals who are already at an increased risk for safety, please look at the helpful resources. There's information on how to recognize the signs of heat-related illness and ways to reduce the risk of developing it. These are important considerations for both the current climate and warmer weather activities in general, really. Just like so many topics we cover in webinars, there is no one size fits all for activities and those on the dementia journey. The focus of this workshop won't be about specific activities to do with someone with dementia, although there will certainly be examples of activities for consideration throughout. Instead, we're gonna be focusing on what constitutes an activity and how to adapt activities to foster more success given the impact dementia can have on someone's ability to engage in the activities that they used to. We'll also be looking at how activities can be incorporated into routine and as a way to maintain and enhance health and well-being. We hope this webinar sparks inspiration and ideas for strategies to create more meaningful activity in the day, especially with the opportunities and circumstances summer or even warmer weather vacations really present us with. Here I am again, that's me. My name is Adrienne Poirier and I'm a support and education coordinator with the Alzheimer's Society of BC's First Link program. And in the background, as we've already mentioned, is my colleague Janine Willemson, who is also a support and education coordinator. So because we've talked a lot about the chat box already, I wanna get us warmed up by using the chat box. So I'm gonna get us started by posing two questions to you. Now you can certainly choose to answer just one or you may like to answer both. I'd like to know what you hope to get out of today's session. What is it that you came hoping to learn? I'm also interested to know what the term activity means to you. What constitutes an activity from your perspective? Please take a moment to type your answers in the chat box. Momentarily, I'll be going through what we will be covering in today's session, and I hope we will be able to touch on many of the things that brought you here. And of course, if your questions go beyond the scope of what we'll be covering today, it's helpful to look at the further resources that are associated with this webinar, and you can talk to the First Link Dementia Helpline about any more personal uh, questions or topics for discussion. So some of the things that we have planned for today are discussing and defining what constitutes an activity. And I'll be really keen to hear what comes up from you in the chat box. Certainly activity involves much more than just hobbies. We'll also be addressing the importance of purposeful and meaningful activities in daily life. Another thing we'll consider is the impact dementia can have on activities. So how does dementia influence someone's ability to do what they have always enjoyed? How does it affect someone's ability to complete or even really start a task? We'll be practicing a little today using the ACE model, A-C-E, adapt, cue, encourage, and enjoy. And finally, we'll want to consider building meaningful activity into a routine. So if that's given enough time, Janine, I'm wondering, is there anything that you'd like to bring forward from the chat box in terms of what people are hoping to uh, take away from this session? Absolutely, Adrian. The chat box is on the move. And so uh, what do we have here? So definitely um, people are looking for some ideas, activities to do in the heat and uh, uh, we're not surprised why we have that request. Uh, we also have not just, some people are interested in physical activities, but others are also interested in activities that keep the mind active. Uh, and then 
a, a really good one. It's yes, not just physical, but something that is enjoyable, an enjoyable way to spend um, time with someone that is special. Um, and then perspective on weather, uh, obviously, especially with people living with dementia. Uh, let me see, what else do we have here? Activities in warm weather, in, and then activities um, for individuals or group based. Uh, so those are some of the comments that are coming in. Wonderful, and thank you. Yeah, definitely what we'll be covering in our, a lot of that in our session today. Absolutely. And what I love just from those comments um, right there is it already captures a little bit of what can be included in that activity. So there's been comments about activities for mental stimulation, activities for physical stimulation, activities that can be done in groups, which would indicate social stimulation. So um, really, really great comments there. And we hope that we cover a lot of what you'd like to be taking away. And and um, I have hopefully some time for, for specific questions as they present themselves. So um, if you haven't yet got a chance, please go ahead and continue um, typing up what the term activity means to you or what comes to mind for an activity. But as you can imagine, we first want to still address the, the COVID factor. Um, when we're talking about activities, we still need to keep the current health situation in mind. So for over a year now, we've all been living through the COVID-19 pandemic, and this has caused significant changes in everyone's routines and ways of life. While we now have a fair amount of experience living through these challenging times under our belts, and there is certainly optimism for a light at the end of the tunnel, it's important to keep in mind that there is still an active pandemic going on. So when planning for activities, stay mindful of how they fit within the provincial health orders. One of the resources linked in the helpful resource guide is the BC province-wide restrictions. Um, and this is a helpful tool to reference to keep in mind what types of activities are safe to engage in while things continue to change. Okay, so now circling back to the focus on activities, let's look at what constitutes an activity. And I know there hasn't been much time since our last question, Janine, so um, you may still be kind of combing through some responses, but I'm curious to know, have you seen some things come up in the chat box regarding what someone deems to constitute an activity? Uh, actually, Adrian, yes, possibly Patty. I'm not sure if this is what you're meaning, but she does say mostly outdoor events. So I'm not sure if she's look if that's interested in what kind of outdoor events or saying an activity is for her would mean mostly an outdoor event. Certainly at this this time of year, um, people want to be getting outdoors when it's safe to do so. Absolutely. And yeah, and then just some more. Um, uh, suggestion, looking for suggestions on what to do. So I'll yeah. let you carry on. Perfect. So as we see here, we know that activities include almost everything that we do in our daily life. What we do for work, roles that we hold in the home and family, what we do in our leisure time, what we do to take care of ourselves. And really they can be thought of, of, any, of as anything that we do in a day. As I mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, there is no such thing as a dementia activity. No one activity is ideal for all people with dementia, just like no one activity is ideal for all people without dementia. Everyone is unique with their own personality, interests, abilities, and past experiences. Dementia can cause a lot of challenges for engaging in the different activities an individual used to enjoy, of course. For example, it can be incredibly frustrating for the grill master of a family to struggle with the complexities of using the barbecue or for the avid gardener to find their garden is no longer thriving given all the skills needed to help a garden grow. People can still engage in the activities they once did or find new activities to enjoy. It's just a matter of approaching those activities in a different way. Meaningful activities include anything that can bring us joy or engage our attention. They often contribute to a sense of purpose, even if, given the changes that happen to memory, it's just in the moment. In fact, as dementia progresses, engaging in the present moment is the top priority. 
Dementia provides the ultimate invitation to live in the moment, as well-being guidelines are so often encouraging us to do, instead of focusing on the outcome. Think about eating an ice cream cone on a hot summer's day, for example. When we are successful in that activity, there's nothing left to show for it. It's just that we ate the ice cream, but the enjoyment of the activity was in the eating of it. Because everyone is unique, when we think about activities, it's often helpful to consider previous interests. What has brought joy or a sense of purpose in the past? What roles or identities held meaning? What things did one do that influenced who they are? Think about what makes you or someone you're supporting unique. What are the things you were or are passionate about? What hobbies have filled your time? How did you contribute to your family and broader community? Think about what constituted a day in someone's life as well. How did someone spend their time? What was their routine? Again, activities really include anything someone can do. The little things do really matter as well. It can be really dispiriting when dementia takes a toll on the ability to engage in activities that used to be so important to someone. Our life experiences really shape us into the person we are today, and it is important to try to find ways people can continue doing what is meaningful to them by adapting activities so they are appropriate for one's current capacity. When someone can no longer do things they once did because of the changes in the brain that come with dementia, it can really impact someone's sense of identity. As in our society, we often equate the activities we do with the people we are. Finding ways to engage in what's important to someone is a way of respecting personhood. It's an ongoing process that takes creativity, patience, and practice. It takes planning and ongoing review and adaptation. The effort, though, is what leads to meaningful moments, and these moments are gifts along the dementia journey. They are moments that can foster connection and help us remember who we are and what's important. Respecting personhood involves a willingness to learn new things about someone as well. Dementia can have an impact on personality. Things that didn't used to hold much interest or importance for someone can become very meaningful to them as things change. One example that comes to mind is from a gentleman who used to participate in one of our programs. He ended up developing a huge interest in painting after being gifted an intricate paint by number set. His wife was quite surprised as he had never expressed an interest in any artistic endeavor before really. He seemed to love the detailed work involved and was always really keen to show off his works as they were completed when he'd join us in the group. If his family had stayed so focused on who he was before, which was someone who had never shown an interest or aptitude for art, they could have missed out on something that brought him ongoing joy and satisfaction. Personhood is about honoring someone, uh, who someone has been and who they are now in this very moment. It means accepting the changes life brings and finding ways to celebrate and enjoy one another as we are. Activities are a vital way of helping someone feel needed, valued, and wanted. A gentleman shared a lovely story with staff about how his family was able to find a role for his wife in a project to help their son and daughter-in-law build a new home. This fellow's wife joined the family at the construction site, but was not able to contribute to the construction projects in the same way she would have before dementia. Dementia had really brought on changes that affected her ability to think through complex tasks. But despite this, it was still really important for her to be there and to contribute. One morning, a large bucket of nails accidentally spilled onto the ground and she volunteered to pick them up. It actually took her several hours to complete the task, but she was so proud when she had found them all. What she gained was a feeling of contribution to part of the crew by getting all the nails gathered from the job site, which made it a safer for people to work on site and also gave them the tools that they needed to complete their job. The next morning, they tried knocking over another bucket of nails and she jumped into action, knowing exactly what to do. After the family witnessed the pride and sense of purpose these activities gave her when she helped in this way on the job site, they included her each morning with a similar task related to gathering or sorting that she could do independently. She was contributing as a valuable member of the team by performing simple tasks that helped her to feel useful. This really is a great example of personhood. 
Think, if you can no longer operate a power drill or hammer nails into a fence, are you still a builder? The answer can be yes. There are many ways to contribute, especially when you're working at, with a group or as part of a team. Another story I really love about engaging someone in meaningful activities actually involves President Ronald Reagan. After being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, it was still in President Reagan's nature to be very busy. One of the ways he did this was by going out and raking all the leaves. Once he'd completed his task, he'd return into the house and start looking for the next thing to do. Because it was so clear how much pride he took in accomplishing his landscaping task, his secret service men would actually go out and spread their raked leaves all over again, and then ask him if he would mind raking them up. He was always really happy to do it. Another example of an activity like this was a gentleman who loved to cut the grass and did so at home on a daily basis. He always felt so proud of the work he'd done that his wife ended up asking several neighbors if it was okay for him to cut their grass as well. He was thrilled to do this and the neighbors of course were very happy too. Given the right activities, individuals can still have a very meaningful impact even as the brain changes with dementia. Whether you're a former president or a friendly neighbor, we all need to feel a sense of purpose and accomplishment. So taking a moment, go ahead and think about what some of the challenges you're experiencing with activities are. What's, what are barriers getting in the way? Um, I'm curious to know what uh, dementia has done to, to change some of the activities that you or those that you support are involved with. I'll give you a few moments to write in the chat box again. And just as you're taking some time to do that, I'll share a few of the barriers that we often hear coming up from care partners when they speak with us. We often hear from care partners things like, it's so frustrating to see my mom just sitting there doing nothing. She used to always keep busy and loved gardening. She seldom goes outside now, even though she's still physically well enough to do some yard work. There can be many barriers to participating in activities, whether someone has dementia or not, including changes in one's ability to engage in the task. Chronic pain or discomfort might affect someone's enjoyment and willingness to engage in an activity. Things like tying fishing lures or gardening can be really physically demanding if um, the, the little intricacies of working one's fingers or, or getting down on one's knees is a problem. Perhaps there's things like changes in eyesight, a heart condition, or shortness of breath that's now restricting someone's physical ability to engage in tasks. Finding the time to adapt uh, new activities or create new routines can also feel like an additional burden when your life is already crammed with the activities necessary for daily living or just for getting by, like getting the house in order and meals prepared and all of the additional challenges that come with supporting someone living with dementia or living with the changes associated with dementia yourself. You may simply be overwhelmed with the situation and choices that are no longer able to plan and, and are no longer able to plan the way that you once did. You might find that you or the person you're supporting are less inclined to do an activity when confidence in the ability to do uh, previous uh, activities with the same level of success is shaken. Or you may simply not find the activity interesting any longer. Whether an activity is interesting to you or not can play a big role in whether you're willing to do an activity. Motivation itself can also be impacted by the brain changes associated with dementia. This behavioral change can present as a lack of interest or apathy, but it's important to understand that loss of initiative happens because part of the brain that switches us off that get up and go factor and makes us actually be able to do the activity we are thinking about may be damaged when dementia is present. It's not uncommon that we hear a comment from people living with dementia themselves, things like, I used to love fishing, but I often lack motivation. If I start, I'm usually happy doing it. It takes me a long time to get started though. This can often be seen as being lazy, both by the care partner and by the person living with dementia themselves, and both people can find it quite frustrating. 
If the part of the brain involved in initiating activity is damaged, then the person may be unable to start activities by themselves. If this is the case, it can often be really impactful to have help at the beginning of the project. So when this is happening, think about the very first steps that need to happen in order to start the activity and give a prompt for someone um, to assist them in getting the ball rolling. The first step might be all that's needed or see where the next stall point is. An example might look like, instead of saying, can you go get yourself ready, it's time to leave, you might try simplifying it and say, let's go for a walk together. Can you stand up? It's hot outside. I've got your hat here. Can you put that on? Many of us find it difficult to ask for or accept help as well. This can be especially true when help is needed with activities we used to be very competent with. With the brain changes associated with dementia, some activities can become challenging to complete, and this can cause someone to shy away from once familiar tasks, even if they used to really enjoy them. Someone might say they don't want to because they aren't confident in their ability to do it successfully anymore. Of course, you want to respect someone's interests if they genuinely dislike an activity, but it is always worth considering if apprehension is the barrier and if adjustments could be made to make the activity more accessible. So Janine, that gives a little bit of time. What are some of the other challenges that you see coming up in the, co the comments? Yeah, thanks, Adrian. Um, absolutely, there's actually several comments that are uh, sort of common themed and around apathy. So uh, definitely the um, starting or, or apathy or starting a project, an activity, not being able to complete it. Uh, so that's definitely has been a barrier or challenging for some people. Um, simple thing, very interesting comment about not wanting to even eat at the table with family because that is, you know, we may find that interesting. Oh, that is that an activity? But yes, it is, right? It's a very enjoyable activity to sit together and eat. Um, and the reason that's challenging for this person is it's too noisy for them. They can't manage that noise anymore. Um, somebody talks about anxiety. So they their anxiety is causing them to become so distracted that they cannot uh, do the activity or continue with the activity. Um, and then there's Dawn brings up a good point here. Uh, and she says, you know, Finding meaningful tasks is one thing, but she's wondering about creating tasks. So, for instance, dumping out something, um, you know, a basket of laundry uh, just to be picked up again. Um, could that potentially be a bit hurtful? So that's just uh, a comment she's making. She's just pondering that. Uh, yeah, so great stuff, everybody. Uh, please continue to uh, put your ideas into the chat box. Those are some really great comments. And what I love there is how it just really highlights again, how there's no one size fits all solution for activities. And I know this can be so frustrating and exhausting for people to hear because pretty much any time um, you're speaking to a support and education coordinator with the society, you keep hearing that there's no one size fits all. But really the beauty of that is the more you focus on the specific situation, um, whether that's thinking creatively yourself or calling to speak with someone from the society to help brainstorm and get some of those ideas, the more customized an approach that you can bring forward. I also really loved kind of that reiteration of the apathy and, and what a big role that can play in as well as anxiety and um, feeling overwhelmed by certain tasks like sitting at the table. That speaks really well to some of the webinar recordings that we have available on our website as well in many different topics like understanding dementia, understanding communication, understanding changes in behavior with apathy. So if you haven't had a chance to check those out, that will be really complimentary learning to what we're talking about here. And again, uh, anyone from the society would be able to help point you in the direction of appropriate information for your particular situation. 
And one other thing I really wanted to highlight was that um, the how to get started on tasks or challenges completing projects. And the difference between those two terms is something we're going to be talking about a little later in the session. Another thing that people often struggle with is that it's simply exhausting to live with dementia, whether you're living with the symptoms yourself or whether you're supporting someone who is. You have two people in the situation or more, depending on who's involved in the support role, learning to live with a brain disease and all of the challenge associated with it. And anytime we're doing new learning, that can be incredibly draining. So exhaustion is often a barrier, whether you're a care partner trying to um, introduce activities or whether you're someone um, with dementia trying to adjust activities that you, you once did. So we know dementia impacts someone's ability to engage in activities and adjustments need to be made, but how do you create those opportunities for successful activities? Now, I don't wanna overwhelm you with questions that we're posing, but if you're up for it, I always love to hear what you've done to um, create some success in activities. So if you've tried something that you found successful, it can be really helpful to share that with, with other people and get a sense of what other people are trying as well. So while you're taking the time to type, again, I'll talk through some of um, the, the strategies that we have. It's important to focus on remaining skills and strengths that can be matched to an activity. Keep in mind that with dementia, abilities and motivation can change day by day and moment by moment. It's not um, a consistent, even for the same person. Energy levels change as well, especially in the heat as so many of us, so many of us have experienced recently. Try to remain flexible when arranging activities to help create positive experiences. Activities should really fit someone's personal um, preferences and personality. As we discussed, this may look like finding ways to adapt a long enjoyed hobby or pastime, but it can also be helpful to think of uh, the way summers used to look for someone when they were much younger, so focusing on some of those more long term memories. For example, if it used to be a big family event to go down to the seaside, it may be really thrilling for someone to spend time walking along a beach or a path by the water. It could be, bring back really fond memories and actually spark conversations that you'd be surprised to have the opportunity to have. If this was not a salient activity for them, though, they might wonder why the heck anyone would willingly go somewhere that's guaranteed to fill one's shoes with sand after only a few steps. So it is really based on the person. It can also mean being observant and looking to learn what they might enjoy now, like the fellow who developed that love for painting. An example in my family, it used to be that one of my family members would be able to identify probably just a handful of birds, duck, crow, pigeon, seagull. Now, a good pair of binoculars and a field guide for bird identification can keep her engaged at a window at length, and nothing sparks her willingness to go for a walk like the promise of seeing what birds are in the area. The last time I saw her, we had such fun together on an app that we would be able we use to identify the birds in the area just by the sound of the calls that they were making. It was so cool to see. The golden term for facilitating activities is adapt. For example, someone who enjoyed preparing elaborate barbecue dinners for a family of 10 may still want to contribute in smaller, more specific ways, like buttering the garlic bread, wiping down the picnic table, scrubbing the potatoes and wrapping them in foil. Breaking down tasks into smaller specific steps enables continued engagement in activities that are meaningful to someone. And it can also be fun to do things together and give an individual a sense that they're able to pass on their knowledge or expertise. Janine, do you see anything else that's, that's coming up that you'd like to share? Yes, uh, thanks, Adrian. Uh, I really like what Maria has said. 
uh, Maria Lynn, sorry. Uh, so just as you were talking, Adrian, about reminiscing, uh, she puts a link to their past. So that is going through photo albums or music uh, from the younger years. And if you do, if you're the, uh, the family member or the, the close friend, and obviously then you would know the family's history, or if you're working uh, with somebody living with dementia to find out the history and maybe bringing up things that were really special to them in their younger years, like that annual camping trip uh, or a hobby that they used to uh, enjoy doing. Uh, so great idea there. Um, looking here, Barb's just put something in. Um, they're coming in fast and furiously here. Um, drives around places that they once worked or visited often, going for drives. Uh, and then a running commentary uh, ensues from the person, right, as they drive in um, and looking at familiar uh, landmarks. Great idea there. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, some, uh, Tom says he likes to do tasks together with the person. And yes, absolutely, that's um, a, a great way to create a moment of joy for both of you uh, to do things together. And sometimes that's the support the person needs to be able to um, manage that task. Uh, Linda talks about uh, past physical movement like dance, absolutely great activity. Uh, and you'll be surprised at people even that have mobility issues and uh, may maybe need a walker when they're walking, but you put music on to uh, especially music from their past and all of a sudden they want to let go of that walker. Um, and Absolutely. Then, yeah, and June, great. This is adapting to their remaining skills. I love this one. Golfing without keeping score. Just out there to have fun. Yes, enjoy the fresh air and that familiar sensation. And really, the whole point is spending time together and and enjoying that time. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing those because because we could go on at length about some of these um, these points. But really, hearing from what you have to say enriches this so much. Another thing I want to add is um, being mindful of how uh, activities can fit into a routine. Um, routines can be really helpful because brain loves brains love routine, whether they're affected by dementia or not. With dementia, however, routine actually becomes essential. So, of course, with the barbecue example, it wouldn't do anyone any good to try to throw a huge family barbecue every day, but maybe there are aspects you can try to fit into the daily routine. Maybe someone is always involved with washing vegetables, tearing up greens for a salad, or some other part of food prep. Routine can also include rest and relaxation, and really, it should have opportunities for rest and relaxation. So thinking about the hot weather, how can you find ways to relax and escape the heat on a hot summer's day? Maybe that's taking a moment to rest in the afternoon with a cool drink in hand. Of course, the temperature of the drink can be adjusted throughout the year as per seasonal weather and per personal preferences. I do know some people who will drink a hot cup of tea with a mothered pot regardless of the weather we're in. But anything that you find relaxing to you and the person that you're supporting is so important as a way to recharge your batteries through an activity. Every day can include fun and joy if we use humor and patience and give ourselves the grace to change and reevaluate what we consider a successful activity. So uh, speaking about golf, here's an, an image of that golf. Many people have heard of dementia described as a journey, and it can be helpful to think of activity as a journey rather than a destination as well. So just like that comment said, it's not about the score at the end of the golf game. It's about the activity of doing golf together. Again, dementia provides the ultimate invitation to live in the moment, which can be difficult for so many people of us given the day-to-day -day stresses and demands of life. If you're already familiar with how dementia impacts the brains, you'll know that short-term memories become increasingly impacted until forming short-term memory is no longer possible. 
When this happens, long-term memories become much more salient for the individual until those memories eventually become impacted as well. This means that what is happening in the present is what you can really count on to enjoy. And there was already comments about how you can use that knowledge of long-term memories to really enhance engagement and connection. Maybe it's something that you already know about the person that you're supporting, or you might have a really fun time looking up um, different aspects of uh, the generation that they grew up in, if there is a generational divide, and kind of asking what their experiences were like. You might get a, a short answer or kind of a deflected answer. That's okay to honor that as well, but you may find you get some really fantastic comments. Um, so, using the golf uh, example, as dementia progresses, someone's ability to have a successful day on the green will be impacted, and while you can certainly adapt your time on the green, it may come to the point where um, it's no longer possible to engage in golf in that way at all at a certain point. What some people share that they've done is tried mini golfing instead and rather than um, doing two different um, teams, uh, one person doing one um, score and another person doing the other, if you team up together that can actually be really fun, lead to a lot of laughs and um, help move the game along if someone with dementia is having a hard time with accuracy and swing. It might also involve sitting and enjoying relaxing um, with a game of golf together. So watching a game of golf together could be a way to enjoy it. Or you might find that someone still really likes to sort through tees or polish their golf clubs, even if they're not able to do the activity anymore. If we become too finished, focused on the finished product, we run the risk of not being in the moment with the person we're supporting and losing many of the possible benefits that we hope to gain from the activity. So I already mentioned cueing as a form of support. I use that as an example for getting up, putting the hat on for a hot day's walk. I want to revisit this for a moment because it can be a very important skill to develop. Cueing is a method to trigger the brain and can support people living with dementia to be more successful and independent with tasks. Going back to the brain changes we mentioned earlier, if the brain that's um, involved in initiating activities is damaged, the person may be unable to initiate activities themselves. So when we talked about that example with um, putting the hat on, getting someone to, to get up to get ready for their walk rather than giving um, a broad um, statement of get yourself ready, we're about to head out, really that could mean anything. So you want to show people as you talk to help them get on board and to be following along with what's going on. An example of an activity that you might do would be to get someone started on cleaning up the patio furniture. So if you told someone, um, go clean up the patio furniture, they might have a really hard time knowing how to go about doing that. But if you brought over a bucket and a cloth and started doing it with them to demonstrate, they may actually do a wonderful job and be able to finish the task with very little further involvement. Try to take your time and allow enough time for someone's brain to process the choices, make a decision and respond. Often people with dementia have shared it can be helpful to have 10 seconds for their brain to complete this process of understanding what's being said, generating a response, and then giving the response. 10 seconds might seem like very little time, but uh, I bet it feels a lot more uncomfortable than what we're used to giving in the moment if you're not already having practice with that. You can also think of ways to reframe um, questions so that someone is only having to give yes or no as an answer. So instead of um, saying, uh, what tools are you gonna use to clean this chair? You might say, this chair is looking really dirty. I think a scrub brush would help. Do you think so? Then they just have to say, yes, they agree. That means the scrub brush would help or no, they don't think so. It at least involves people in the process, having them feel like they have a voice without being overwhelmed by um, trying to generate responses. Make sure you allow sufficient time to complete the activity you plan together for the day or be willing to start again the next day to complete it.
Okay, so getting into the warmer weather activities now. With warmer weather and changes in COVID restrictions, we want to look to a few summertime activities you might choose to consider this year. And again, I will take a minute to open up the discussion for you to add your comments for some of the ideas that have worked for you for, for summer activities. Take a moment to type them up in the chat box and I'm sure that especially if you have some beat the heat activities that will be of really big interest to the group these days. While you're typing, I will go ahead and share some ideas as well. Things like going for ice cream that can be an incredible motivation to get someone willing to get up and go for a walk. I know in my hometown there is um, a to die for ice cream shop in the park in the central area, and it used to be when I was younger it wouldn't be a, you wouldn't be able to get me out of the house to go around that whole park if there wasn't a promise for ice cream at the end. Gardening can be a great way to get some fresh air in, and studies actually suggest that getting your hands in soil can be benef beneficial both physically and mentally. Painting the fence or doing other outdoor chores is not only productive, but can be a good source of physical activity. We don't always think of chores as physical activity, but they can be a really significant form of that. Depending on whether someone, where someone is at on their dementia journey, these tasks don't need to be done on an as needed basis only. You might not typically scrub down your deck many times in a season, but if it's a task that brings a sense of accomplishment and purpose and is an appropriate way to expend energy, who's to say you and the person you're supporting don't deserve to have the cleanest deck in the neighborhood? And it could actually be a source of pride as we start to be able to have more visitors again. Picnics, for example, can be fun not only for the eating portion, but for preparing what you'll be bringing, choosing, and getting to your destination and setting up a comfy area. All the more beneficial if you can do it with others that you care about, some of that social activity as well. Any ideas that you'd like to, to share, Janine, that you're seeing coming up? Yes, Adrian, absolutely. I'm going to actually bring us back to a couple that were shared a little while ago, a couple slides back. Um, but I think they absolutely can be very beneficial for warmer weather. Uh, it was Sue who mentioned the chicken soup books. And um, she was talking about how there are a lot of those books. So for instance, uh, chicken soup for the teacher's soul. So if your person used to be a teacher, um, or there's another one apparently, chicken soup for the tea lovers. If you know your person has always loved tea, um, you could take that book, you could go find a nice shaded spot with a nice cold drink and read the stories. The, um, Sue says they're short, they're opportunity for reminiscing, and that has been a great way she's found to bring up memories. Uh, I also love Lori, our very own Lori, uh, shared a great one that she had heard from a client where they would, he would read letters that they had kept, this couple had written every single day a year before they got married to each other and had kept those letters. And they then, um, he would read them to her again on the anniversary. And so I thought that was that was lovely. And then some really practical fun ones. Maria Lynn mentions Mr. Sprayer. So um, apparently that's fun for all ages. I haven't tried it. Maybe I need to. Uh, but, <laughs> and she says sufficient warning, though, obviously, and or modeling. I love Lynn's one. Um, it talks to the experience of, of how, how we can um, experience things through tactile. Uh, she talks and reminiscing going barefoot in the grass. Um, uh. Love that idea. And uh, pontoon boating, a small one on a lake. Um, Maureen says he likes it. Um, we keep close to the shore. Ah, another great one, washing a pet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Isn't that an awesome one? And playing chess outside. That's great working on repairs uh, because the person used to work on car cars regularly. So lots of great examples here. Uh, yeah. 
So keep I them coming. <laughs> love that. Thank you so much. And yeah, please do keep an eye on on the chat field as as we continue to kind of wrap up this session. Um, your comments are are what really generate some of the the best ideas. So thank you so much for sharing those. I just love them. That what was it? Some kind of soaker thing. That sounds like yes, something yes, that um, would catch my attention <laughs> these days. A Mr. Sprayer. A Mr. Mr. Sprayer. Sprayer. Okay. Yeah. I imagine and there's a generic thing that we can find as well. Absolutely. I, I will move us forward um, to a helpful model to consider for any of these activities as dementia progresses and changes need to happen. Think about ACE, adapt, cue, encourage, and very importantly, enjoy. So we'll go through an um, just a couple of examples. Gardening, for example, this is a really big area of interest for so many people. I know it's um, something I'm keen to do when, when the possibility presents itself. Someone might have been able to engage in managing the whole garden on their own, but as dementia progresses, that can uh, be a really daunting and overwhelming project that just becomes um, too much for someone to handle. Thinking about breaking down the tasks and really when you think about gardening, that can include so much. It can include um, planning out plots, shopping for supplies, um, actually getting on your hands and knees in the dirt, deadheading, watering, all of these different things. So it might not be that someone could garden in the way they used to, but look at the, the activity creatively. Is there areas that someone could still be involved in? Are there ways that you can prompt um, an activity? So maybe um, instead of saying, I need you to get these planters filled, put the plants with the appropriate planters and soil out on an outdoor table. It's a visual cue for a task that needs to be done. If that's not enough, maybe you go out together and start to fill them together. These are things that, that can bring a lot of enjoyment and a sense of accomplishment. Encouragement too, you might say, I could really use your help in get, getting these planted. Even if someone is disinclined to do an activity, if they know that they're gonna be helping and that their efforts are appreciated, someone's often really willing to, to engage. Activities can include chores as well. So um, chores that someone may have engaged in for years. And this is where I wanna touch briefly on the difference between thinking about projects and tasks. Something that I try to do if I start to feel overwhelmed by something I need to accomplish is to reflect and ask myself whether I'm focusing on a project or on a task. Completed tasks really are what make up a project. If we just think of the project we need to get done, we can become incredibly overwhelmed and immobilized, not knowing where to start. This can be a hang up for really big projects or relatively small projects as well. For example, you see here people doing the laundry. Um, someone with a healthy brain might be able to see the laundry as a task that they need to accomplish in their day, but really it's actually a big project made up of many little tasks, including um, depending on how diligent your household is with getting dirty clothes into the hamper in a prompt fashion. It might include rounding up the clothes, it involves sorting different loads, um, and which often requires a knowledge of garment care, how things need to be managed, um, putting appropriate loads in with the appropriate amount of soap, setting it to the appropriate setting, being mindful of when the cycle ends so your wet clothes don't sit in there, gathering mildew, um, recognizing if something should go in the dryer or if sh something should be hung to dry, um, getting the clothes out of the dryer in a timely fashion so they don't get all wrinkled again, folding things up, sorting them and putting them away properly. Really, that is so much involved in just the simple task, simple quote unquote, of doing laundry. 
So think about ways that you might be able to get someone involved. Maybe the whole project is difficult, but they're still really able to get out there and hang clothes up on the line or um, fold um, laundry that's been completed, sort through socks that need to be paired. All of these things, if you break down, am I thinking about this as a Am I thinking about a project as a task that can really help get some inroads to know um, how you might be able to get someone engaged in different activities to help things go more smoothly? So it's also important to keep in mind that activities provide a sense of purpose. As humans, we all have the need to be wanted and valued. We need to have a sense of purpose. It feels good to accomplish a task and to know that we have contributed in some way. Tasks give us purpose to, and doing tasks together or dividing up tasks that best fit each party's abilities typically happens naturally in the relationship. But with dementia, that will need to be uh, reevaluated as things progress on an ongoing basis. So you might consider making to-do lists together and crossing them off to get a sense of a job well done. It's a visual reminder of what you have accomplished and you wanna make sure that your to-do lists are realistic and doable. That way you can set everyone up for success to feel good at the end of the day and you can always make a new list tomorrow. Let the person you know that you appreciate all that they do to contribute. And this applies to everyone, whether they're living with dementia or a healthy brain. We all have a need to have purpose and feel appreciated, and you can give that to each other in daily activities. So I just wanna to touch on, as we said, the importance of routine. Consistent routine really helps people know what to expect, and it takes the burden off of the brain to try to anticipate and adjust at all times. So um, some steps to help develop a consistent routine that you can take into account. Consider your current routine. Think about the challenges that are existing now, what activities you can adapt so that you can get the same benefit. Can you adjust your daily routine to make it work better for you? Consider writing down your routine. Structured days can make the task of filling the time in the day less overwhelming. And if you find a new activity that you enjoy, you might wanna incorporate that more frequently. Um, consistent sleep is very important and often people are finding this is impacted with the heat and the long, long days that we have. It seems to be daytime at almost every hour of the day now, given our days are longer and mornings start earlier. So think about what you need to do to set yourself up for um, better sleep. Um, that might include including darker blinds in the bedroom to, to cue the brain that it's time to rest now. And sleep, as you know, will um, be beneficial for everyone, whether they're living with dementia or not and helping get through the day. Make sure that there's um, opportunities to incorporate purposeful, physical, entertaining, and social activities, and also activities to give yourself time to rest and relax. Balancing activities throughout the day or week is key as dementia progresses, and there may need to be more time to rest. So that may mean if you have a particularly busy day, don't plan an overstimulating activity the next day. Okay. So in these last few minutes, I just want to summarize some of the things that um, really highlight success in activities. I hope that you have um, thought of some, uh, that this has generated some strategies to help try to um, use in the coming months. As I said, there aren't going to be specific activities that work for everyone, but finding and creating activities that work for your situation is what um, really leads to success. And success is about meaningful activity that's built into a routine based on strengths, interests, and abilities for your particular situation, using proper cueing, and using small steps, enjoying the moment. So just in the last few minutes here, please use the chat box to share what you're planning um, to try or what stood out to you from today. And if you'd like, consider writing down one to two points that stood out from you to, 
stood out for you today and one action item that you'd like to try to incorporate into your daily routine. You can write that on a post-it note or a note that you can easily refer back to to track your progress. So as we come to the end of today's presentation, please share any um, comments or questions that we might have a moment to address at the end. Um, and while you're typing, I would really ask you to take a few minutes to please complete a short evaluation um, on today's webinar. The link to the survey will be put in the chat box. Um, Janine's probably going ahead and doing that right now. Your feedback is really critical for us to continue to improve our webinars and content. You can click on the link in the chat box to participate in the survey. It will real realistically really only take you fewer than three minutes to fill in. If you're worried about clicking the link and going away from this webinar, please go ahead and send an email to learnfromhome at alzheimerbc.org. It's the um, email address you see at the top of the slide here, and they'll be able to send you a link to the evaluation. Living with dementia is hard, and we invite you to stay connected to us and to others who share many of your feelings and experiences. We are happy to set up regular phone support for you. We have regular telephone and video support groups for caregivers and groups for people with early symptoms of dementia. These groups provide a safe space to share your questions, concerns, and experiences. We also have Minds in Motion online. It is a weekly fitness um, and social program for people who are in the early stages of dementia to attend with a care partner, family member, or friend. And to register, you can go ahead and call the Dementia Helpline. So I'll change to that in um, just a moment so you can see the number on the slide. But I will highlight next week's webinar. We will be back next week um, at the same time for targeted strategies for dementia related behaviors, which is part two of another session. And that's going to be talking about uh, how to respond to aphasia, confabulation, anxiety, and shadowing. So things that often come up along the dementia journey. A recording of today's webinars will be available on our website within a week. And as I mentioned, we do have recordings from our past webinars that I'd really encourage you to take a look at if um, you have further information that you need that goes beyond what we were able to talk about today. So that brings us right to 3 p.m. I will end with the information for the First Link Dementia Helpline that is answered 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Friday. Um, and it, for the English helpline. And there is also helpline services in um, Cantonese, Mandarin, and Punjabi available from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the numbers for those resources can be found on our website. So um, Janine, in this last moment, I'll just see if there's any last comments you wanted to highlight or any last questions we might be able to address. I know that people will need to start leaving um, as we've come to the end here. Uh, yes, uh, I'll just, one thing that um, Tom is thankful that he learned today was about uh, writing out the list. I'm just trying to find, uh, I've lost, Every, he just said that was a very helpful tip to 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 write out uh, a list, um, and he's thankful for that. Maureen shares, I think about doing things in the moment stood out to her. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yes, and so I think that's a, a thing that we're on. We're learning all the time, right? Is to to be present in the moment. It's not an easy thing for us, as we usually. Uh, don't uh, take time to be in that moment. So thank you, Maureen, for sharing that. That's a beautiful thing to end on because this is being in the moment is really what we have on the dementia journey. So thank you so much for for sharing that. And I just want to thank you all so much for your participation in today's webinar. It was really wonderful to get to hear from you. And I hope that you are all able to stay safe and cool and stay connected with us as we can be of support along your journey.